So recently on the channel we got the platinum trophy for Far Cry 5. Now as many of you may be able to tell from my videos I love a good Ubisoft game and I've platinumed a good portion of them. However the Far Cry 5 platinum kind of reminded me as to why I avoided them. It's not that I don't enjoy the series it's just I find it a lot harder to get into them than the majority of other games that Ubisoft have made. Well a lot of you guys left comments wanting to see more Far Cry content and so I decided that I will fulfill your guys requests. Now a lot of you suggested New Dawn and even Far Cry 3 and 4 and although I will definitely be covering those videos at some point in the future, I instead wanted my second Far Cry Platinum to be one of the two Far Cry games I have yet to play, that being Far Cry Primal and Far Cry 6 and I'm sure by the title of the video you already know what game I chose. Now the game hasn't got much of a story so if it feels like I'm rushing through it I promise I'm not, there is just genuinely that little but anything that is worth Worthy of knowing I will definitely cover. Anyway guys with that out of the way this is how we took down the two rival tribes and brought peace to the land of Oros and how I got the platinum trophy for Far Cry Primal. Enjoy. The game begins in the year 10,000 BCE just after the last ice age where we play as a Winger hunter named Takar. Wenger? Winger? One of them. Anyway, we find ourselves in the midst of a mammoth hunt with some fellow Winger tribesmen. We begin making our way through the grass, slowly tracking and isolating the mammoth we were after, until eventually we could launch our attack and eventually bring the Manny down. However, now was not the time to celebrate as Diego decides to come and avenge his castmate and begins to chow down on our Winger brothers before forcing us off of the edge of a cliff. <laughs> We awaken from the fall to find our only remaining brother in a pretty bad way. He tells us to continue on until we find the land of Oros and our lost Winja brothers. Unfortunately, our friend doesn't survive and we end up laying him to rest, leaving us as the only survivor and unlocking our first trophy of the game. Now alone and with no weapon, we decided to scavenge some materials from the numerous trees, plants and rocks in the area to craft ourselves a bow that we can use for both defending ourselves and hunting for some food. After fueling up for the journey ahead of us, we begin proceeding through a nearby cave system where we find evidence of another Ouija having recently been here and proceeded to follow the clues. They eventually lead us to a woman that seems to be able to hold her own as we see her cutting ears off of corpses, but shortly becomes a stone damsel in distress. However, we manage to save her from the saber tooth before making our escape. We then find ourselves in the Valley of Oros where our new friend recognises us as a fellow Winger and introduces herself as Sailor. She tells us that she needs the ears of the Udam, although doesn't actually explain as to why before telling us that the Udam leader Ul destroyed the Winger village, causing its people to scatter across Oros. Before she can explain further, it becomes apparent that the tiger left a pretty deep cut as Sailor almost collapses, so we decide to head out into the local surroundings and find the necessary plants and herbs needed in order to help her recover from her wounds. After helping Sailor, it was time to go out into the world of Oros to find our Winger brothers and sisters. During our travels, we end up stumbling across a Wenja shaman by the name of Tensei. He tells us that he is going to call for a strong spirit. Little did I know that was going to be the drink he was about to hand me, as after drinking it, we find ourselves passing out before being thrown into some kind of spirit vision, where we find ourselves flying through the air following the spirit of an owl. Once we awaken, Tensei then tells us that the Owl Spirit has named us Beastmaster and has granted us the ability to go out into the wilderness and tame the various beasts that can be found throughout Oros. And we would get to put that to the test almost instantly as we find ourselves hunting down a white wolf and using our newly acquired skills to tame the beast. Doing so not only gives us an animal companion to tag along in our travels, but also means that Tensei agrees to join our village, unlocking the Spiritual Advisor Trophy. 
At this point, now that we had a few people living back in our village, it was time we actually build some huts for them to live in. We once again headed back out into the wilderness and began foraging and hunting for the materials we needed, during which we come across something known as a bonfire, which pretty much is this game's version of an Assassin's Creed viewpoint. Killing the enemies and lighting the fire reveals more quests and other things in the surrounding area. Thankfully, the supply run didn't actually take too long, and within no time at all we were doing what Bob does best, and that's building. And after building two new huts in our village for Sailor and Tensei, we unlock the home improvement trophy. <laughs> Turns out that the Udam have learned of our plans of rebuilding the Wenja tribe and decide to launch an attack led by its leader Ul. He tells us that essentially he doesn't appreciate the fact that we are living in his territory and tells us that if we don't leave, we will die. Now, I don't know who this Stone Age looking ass thinks he is, but we aren't about to back down, and so proceed to defend the village against waves of incoming Udam warriors before tracking them down to a nearby camp dealing with the rest of the Udam and earning another story-related trophy. After dealing with the Udam, we then meet back with the Shaman where he once again spikes our drink, this time with a lovely pair of eyeballs which causes us to have another vision, during which we discover that the Udam seem to worship some type of stone fertility statue, however we wasn't actually too sure how this was supposed to come into play. At this point it was clear though that our main goal was to bring down Ul, the leader of the Udam, but to do that we were going to need a little bit of help first, and so we decided to head back out into Oros to find and recruit more Wenja to our tribe. Not long into our travels we end up coming across some Wenja who we decide to assist in dealing with the attacking Udam, and after doing so the tribesman agrees to join our village, which unlocks us the subdivisions trophy for reaching a tribe population of at least 20. And shortly after, I find myself taming a rare black jaguar that rewards us with the fancy friend trophy for taming our first rare beast. Now if you look on the map, you can see numerous question marks all over the place. These are hidden locations, and discovering 15 of these unlocks the map maker trophy. Now, turning our focus back onto the Winger we are looking for, there are three specific specialist Winger that we need to recruit into our tribe, each with their own recruitment mission and trophy for doing so. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding what we needed to do in order to recruit them, as most of them just involve killing Udam and fetching specific items. Just know we got a total of three trophies. The first specialist we recruited was Karush, a man who likes a good fight, and after proving ourselves in battle by helping him kill a whole Udam force, he agrees to join our tribe to teach the other Winja how to fight, and we unlock the Deadeye Trophy. We then come across the specialist known as Wuga, who seems to think that pissing on someone is how you introduce yourself. Turns out though, this must have been a normal thing for the Winja people, as regardless of the fact that we had just been pissed on, we still agree to help him out, and we end up finding some special rocks known as the Blood of Oros, and once we return them to him, he agrees to use his piss powers to make powerful weapons for our tribe, and we unlock the Master Fixit Trophy. Which brings us to our final specialist, and that was a huntress by the name of Jaima, and after hunting down the bear she had been tracking, she, like all of the others, also agrees to join our tribe, and we unlock the Grey Huntress Trophy. A short while later, we find out that the Udam aren't the only tribe that we have to worry about in Oros, as we discover that a tribe known as the Azila tribe have captured some of our brothers, and we are tasked with going to rescue them. We end up tracking them down to a nearby camp, where we learn that the Azila actually use fire as a main way of bringing an end to their enemies. Now, while we do manage to rescue the prisoners inside the camp, and ironically, using fire to burn the place down, we are captured by the tribe and are introduced to its leader, Batari. She tells us that she is impressed with us and wants us to join her and the Azila tribe. We of course decline and she proceeds to throw us into a pit of fire down below. Thankfully, we were a good swimmer and was able to make our escape, unlocking the Liberator Trophy. We then head back to our village where we once again meet up with Tensei and once again have another vision. During this vision we learn that the Azila both worship and fear an object known as the Mask of Krati, which is apparently a mask of Batari's son who she had burned alive. 
Absolutely amazing parenting right there. We then find Sailor where she tells us it was time to make a move on Ul and the Udam land, but the path there was blocked by poisonous fumes that would kill us before we even get through it. She tells us that she does know of an antidote to battle against the poison, but it requires some rare yellow leaves found in the north. We of course agree to head up into the snowy mountains in search of these leaves, and on the way there manage to unlock the Killer's Belief trophy for eliminating 25 enemies using a takedown. We eventually find the leaves that Sailor needed, however while picking them are ambushed and captured by a bunch of Udam. We then awaken in a cage where we find Ul along with his daughter talking to us. He essentially reveals that the Udam are sick and they have been trying to find a cure for the sickness and they have resorted to eating the flesh of the Winja in the hopes of finding that cure. Of course we wasn't planning on sticking around and becoming this guy's next meal so we quickly made our escape from the cabins, making sure to bring as many Udam down as I can with me and unlocking another story related trophy. After escaping the cavern we return to our village where we give Sailor the leaves and she crafts us an antidote for the poison fumes. And now it was time to launch our attack on the Udam land and take down Ul once and for all. And while making our way over there we end up unlocking a couple of miscellaneous trophies. The first was the menagerie trophy for taming a total of 7 beasts. And the second was the Skewer Trophy for eliminating a total of 100 enemies using a spear. <laughs> Now during the stage we also managed to capture the first of the two fortresses in the game. Fortresses sound scary but they aren't overly difficult at all. They are essentially just a bigger version of an Udam or Azila camp with more elite enemies as well as a boss. The boss in this fortress being an Udam warrior by the name of Dar and upon beating him in combat take him alive back to our village much to the disapproval of the others but with the hopes of being able to work together in the future. We then use the antidote Sailor gave us to gain access to the Udam lands, where we fight our way through the Udam army until we reach Ul's cave. Once inside we find Ul where we must defeat him in combat with the seemingly only viable way of doing this by shooting down the absolutely massive icicles hanging from the ceiling. Eventually he retreats deeper into the cave where we find him about to end the life of one of his children. Thankfully he realises that we weren't there to kill his kids just to stop him and his attacks on the Winja and so asks us to take his children back to the village and protect them. To which of course we agree, leaving him for dead, bringing the children back to the village and unlocking another story related trophy. With the Udam tribe now broken and scattered we could turn our focus back to tracking down the Azila tribe and Tensei tells us of a cave where we can find the mask of Karate and we must go there and steal it from the Azila. While making our way through this Azila camp taking out the numerous guards we managed to unlock the Sikkim trophy for having our tamed beast eliminate a total of 50 enemies. <laughs> We eventually find Krati and the Mask however are ambushed by Batari and the Azila and she shoots us in the leg before taking back the Mask. She then made the big mistake of threatening to kill us a little too close, giving us the opportunity to stab her in the neck with part of the arrow, taking the Mask and making our escape, resulting in another story related trophy. We then head back to the village to once again speak with Tensei where he reveals our plan to take down the Azila. The plan was to wear the mask to instill fear in the Azila warriors, allowing us to get close enough to Patari to take her down. While making our way down to her camp we end up coming across and capturing our second and final fortress of the game, bringing its leader Roshani back to our camp and unlocking the conquest trophy for conquering all of the forts. <laughs> Now along with the ability to tame wild animals we also have the option to even ride a few of them, like saber tooth tigers and mammoths for instance, to which we then use a mammoth to actually break down the gates into the Azila homeland and while riding it also managed to kill a total of 25 enemies for the out of my way trophy. <laughs> Once in the Azila homeland we proceeded to make our way around to the Azila camps in order to free our captured Wenger brothers for their assistance in attacking the temple that Batari is holed up in. 
Once inside, we then don the mask of Krati, put in fear into the hearts and minds of the many Azila warriors, and proceed to slaughter them all as we make our way up through the temple. Eventually, we come face to face with Batari, and it was time for another boss fight. Now, I will say, out of all of the boss fights in the game, this was perhaps the longest and most disappointing. For the other bosses in the game, we were for the most part able to deal just straight up damage to them using our melee weapons, and the combat seemed to be a bit more active. This fight just had us fight in waves of enemies until we could finally deal damage to her, and for the majority of the fight, she could only be damaged using arrows. I don't know, I just feel like a little bit more could have been done with this fight, especially as it's the final boss fight of the story, it's a bit underwhelming. Nevertheless though, we end up taking Batari down by throwing her into the fire. This then brings some sort of peace to the Valley of Oros and we unlock our final story related trophy of the game. Now with the main game story finally out of the way we could turn our focus into clearing up all of the game side and post story content. There was a fairly decent amount we had to get through and so I decided to start by completing numerous missions given to us by the specialists that we recruited into our camp including Dar and Roshani both of the fortress leaders. Now we hadn't done too many of these throughout the story but thankfully these missions aren't too long and are once again like many other missions they just require us to take down new numerous enemies, hunt animals or go and fetch some specific items. Completing 12 of these though unlocks the 12 labours trophy. Now throughout the game we had come across numerous different animals and beasts, however throughout the world we can find 4 different legendary beasts and we get a trophy for fighting and taming all of them. The first legendary beast we tracked and tamed was the Bloodfang Sabertooth resulting in the Here Kitty trophy. We then fought and brought down the legendary Blood Tusk Mammoth for the In Danger Trophy. We then again tracked and tamed the legendary Great Scar Bear for the Big Teddy Trophy. Before finally taming the last legendary beast known as the Snow Blood Wolf for the Good Boy Trophy. During this stage we also managed to knock out two miscellaneous trophies. The first trophy being combat related and that is for using the sting bombs. Basically pots filled with bees that you can throw at enemies. Killing a total of 10 enemies this way unlocks the bees trophy. And the second trophy we unlocked was the skirmish trophy for capturing a total of 10 outposts. Basically just a bigger version of a bonfire. Continuing on with cleaning up the map, our main focus at this point was to make our way around all of the remaining outposts and capture them for another trophy. Obviously during this stage we were going to be running into a lot of enemies and so I used this as the perfect opportunity to knock out a big portion of the combat related trophies. For our first trophy, using the club we then killed a total of 100 enemies for the and stay down trophy. Using materials we gathered up in the world, we then crafted a total of 100 different items for the Armourer Trophy. Now during combat you may also notice that our tamed beast can also take damage and there is a chance that our beast can go down in combat. Not to fret though as we can both heal and revive the beast should it go down. Doing this 25 times unlocks the Veterinarian Trophy. <laughs> We then unlock the Sharpshooter Trophy for killing a total of 100 enemies with the bow. The Inflammable Trophy for killing a total of 50 enemies with fire. The Quick Draw Trophy for killing 15 enemies with throwing shards. And finally the Bad Trip Trophy for using poison to influence a total of 25 enemies. Oh, 
also while capturing the outpost we also managed to unlock three trophies related to side quests these being the beast kill tribal clash and the help wenger quests pretty self-explanatory with what we have to do here for the beast kill quests we are simply tasked with tracking and taking down a certain beast for a fellow wenger completing five of these unlocks the master tracker trophy <laughs> We then took on the Tribal Clash quest which had us head into an Udam or Azila camp to burn it to the ground and kill all of its inhabitants. Doing this a total of 10 times unlocks us the Crush Your Enemies trophy. With our final quest related trophy being the Good Neighbour trophy for completing a total of 15 Help Wenger quests. That usually has us protecting and escorting a group of Wenger to their destination and after completing our 15th one we unlock the trophy. And of course it wasn't too long after that before we ended up successfully capturing our final outpost unlocking the expansion trophy. With the majority of the cleanup now completed, I noticed that during this stage I also managed to obtain a good amount of materials and different skins needed for upgrading the huts back at our village. Completely upgrading each of the remaining huts manages to nab me the Real Estate Baron trophy. Now with only 10 trophies remaining and the platinum closing in, I decided to knock out the remaining 5 combat trophies. The first trophy was for using our slingshot to kill a total of 10 enemies. Doing so unlocks the David and Goliath trophy. We then crafted and used a bunch of hunting traps in order to take down a total of 10 enemies, unlocking the gotcha trophy. We then used our owl and his aerial attack to take down a total of 15 enemies for the feathered friend trophy. Using our bow and arrow we then managed to kill a target from at least 70 feet away for the bullseye trophy. before finally unlocking our last combat related trophy which like the last one had us getting a kill from quite a fair distance. This time we needed to throw a spear and kill a target that is at least 50 feet away. Like the last trophy it took me a few tries but eventually we get our kill and our final combat related trophy right on target. <laughs> At this point I decided to focus on unlocking the rest of my skills but to do this I still needed to achieve max level and so I found the quickest way to do this was to reset all of the outposts and fortresses on the map and using the enemies to grind out XP. It took me a little while but eventually we gained enough XP earning our final few skill points that allowed us to purchase all of our remaining skills unlocking the expert Wenger trophy. <laughs> Now throughout the land of Oros there are a total of 184 collectibles that we can find. These range from things like painted rocks known as Dacia hands and cave paintings, all the way to spirit totems and the masks of Azila. Thankfully we don't need to find all 184 of them and instead only need to collect 80 of them for a trophy. Now most of these are pretty easy to find and do appear on your map when you're close enough and eventually we find our 80th collectible unlocking the cave holder trophy. We then unlock the Tears of Shame trophy for killing and skinning one of our own tamed beasts. Sorry buddy. And we come across an easter egg referencing Far Cry Blood Dragon which also manages to unlock us the Mark IV Wenger trophy. Which brings us to our final trophy that just so happens to be another reference to another Ubisoft series of games and that being Assassin's Creed. For this trophy we needed to climb up to the peak of Padaku Lookout and leap off of it like the generations that come after us will find themselves doing. Doing so does unlock us to our final trophy of the game, Kunda of Faith as well as the Apex Predator Platinum Trophy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
And with that being the Platinum Trophy, this brings us to the end of the video and with that, my thoughts on Far Cry Primal and its Platinum Trophy. Straight off the bat, it's very easy. If you're looking for something that isn't going to take a whole week to Platinum, then this is definitely a game that you should consider. Now, everything that you've come to typically expect from Far Cry games all remain the same in this game. Combat, side content, it's all pretty much the same. So if you enjoy the style of Far Cry games, then you'll most likely enjoy this. Obviously, with the only real variation it being set in the Stone Age. The story is very short. I believe there's only 14 or so story missions and the majority of these just involve you going to another tribe's camp to either retrieve something or to kill everyone and burn the camp to the ground. Now for the story that we do have, I mean it's a bit bare bones. Granted, I guess there's only really so much you can do with that kind of time period but I feel like everything was just kind of rushed and there was no build up to anything. It's just kind of like, here, rescue these people, go kill those people, and then you're done. Like, there's no kind of build up, there's no easing into the fact that you've completed the game. It's just kind of, here, you're doing this, now you're done. Saying that though, as someone who finds it very hard to get into Far Cry games, I found this one quite enjoyable. And because the game is so short and because the Platinum is just genuinely very easy, I have to recommend this as a game that you should get the Platinum for. But that's just my opinion and of course I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then make sure to hit that like button and share this video around. It shows your support and your support is always greatly appreciated on the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything I upload. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video.